Are you looking for a way to differentiate yourself and stand out in the crowd? Or how about a way to showcase your personality, your passion, and even your unique expertise? Today's topic is increasing your bottom line, the competitive advantage of public speaking. Welcome to the Influencer's Journey Show. My name is Suzanne Hart. And I'm Taria Hodge. And the big question is, how does the average entrepreneur like us, who started with limited time, zero marketing budget, or little online presence, get their authentic message into the marketplace and become a person of influence? And what skills must you learn? And most importantly, who are you required to become to magnetically attract your divine client and build a loyal following? Ooh. Hello, good <laughs> day. How are you? Doing wonderful, excited. You know, today is the big day. We are preparing for our Unleash the Power of Your Story live masterclass that's happening this evening. And I just, yeah, I just absolutely love when we are in this cycle of our marketing, we get a chance to unpack this wonderful topic of communication, speaking, and storytelling. So I am super excited for today's episode on the Influencer's Journey Show because it's a big question, two big questions we ask at the top of the hour. And I think these are the things that are on top of every entrepreneur's mind. So we get a chance to unpack them. So I, I'll go ahead. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you share. And, you know, this topic is is so real for me because, you know, when you have something happen before your eyes that you didn't expect. Mm -hmm. And so I remember this was about, oh, my goodness, fifth, four, about 14 years ago, okay. even possibly longer. And I had not really done a lot of public speaking. I had done a little bit. I was just coming out from hiding in the back of the room, mm -hmm. taking the front of the room. And I had done this training at an event um, and it got a lot of great feedback such that someone told uh, the owner of the company that I was with about this training. And I got a phone call asking me to deliver this training at their next event. So this was an event for about three to 400 people. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, um, and of course I'm going to say yes, because I'm in that season of yes, because I want to grow. And so understand no one knows me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really making any income. I am the newbie. And I'm being asked to deliver this training. So I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm afraid. You, I'm running the gamut. However, the day arrives, I take the stage and I deliver this training that seems like to me, you know, and everybody's like, it's like fireworks. Mm. And, and they're talking about the training and how much insight they got and all these things. And instantly I went from being this unknown individual to this person who had credibility in a particular area and everybody wanted to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And what struck me was when I walked into the room, no one really knew me. Yeah. I was just another person sitting in the audience until I was invited to speak and voila, things changed. And that began my journey in that company, getting me to be a lead trainer, um, doing a lot of speaking for them. But it was this journey that started in that moment of, yes, I'll do it scared. Yeah. I'll take the stage and I'll do my one of my first real you know, opportunities to do some public speaking and yeah. training. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what it's, you know, it's really all about, you know, so sometimes people really don't know what you have and what you could bring to the table <clears throat> until, you know, you, you know, you show up, like you, like you said, you stop hiding out from the back of the room and you give yourself the opportunity, you know, to share your knowledge and share your expertise and then give yourself once again, more opportunity for more people to come in contact with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so for me, one of the things as we were preparing for this topic, 
you know, I thought back about my early days too on mm -hmm. the entrepreneurial journey. And part of my experience in the beginning has been like a challenge. And one of my biggest challenges was how do, how do I gain clients and not just gain clients, but the right fit clients. So oh, I big, remember, big question, the yeah. big question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, you know, just being out there doing social media services, offering services, and people would always be curious because so social media is that thing that I think that a lot of people really know that they should be doing, but really don't understand how to do it. So they're, you know, looking for the experts. And I remember I would get into these conversations and I'll be busy telling people what to do. I'll be busy showcasing the how of what to do it. But the challenge was people was just like, oh yeah, that sounds great. How much do you charge? And then I would give my fee and then they will say, let me get back to you. Mm. Never return. Or the bold ones, because you know, there are some bold people out there would challenge and say, well, why do you charge that much? I could go to, you know, any other site like, you know, the VA services like Fiverr and those other places, and I could get someone to do what you're offering for mm -hmm. a fraction of your cost. And it was heartbreaking. It was yeah. hard. It was challenging. But I'm going to tell you, the thing that shifted it for me is when I decided to stop hiding and start speaking and showcasing my expertise and not just in the physical doing the thing, but why am I an expert? Why am I credible in this area? What have been my experiences that I could pass on and share to others? And I'm going to tell you, it's like automatically started to weed out those people who were price shopping. And I started to get the people who really wanted to know how to make this work in their business and looking for someone that, that they number one, find credible, someone who won't disappear yeah. <laughs> on them, understand their journey yeah, seen that. <laughs> and link arms, right. And walk with them through the journey. So like I said, yeah, this is a very interesting topic. So I'm super excited for our super achievers to actually gain some insight on what we're going to unpack today. You know, this topic is, is so cool because it really gets us to look at the difference between what our skills, bio, mm -hmm. um, and expertise tells the world and how our personalities, our unique experiences, our mannerisms, our energy can be that distinguishing thing that has people say, you know what, this is the person I'm supposed to work with. And, and really we're talking about, can you bring to the stage your it factor? Yeah. Because the day I took the stage, I had, was training something that many people had trained because someone had taught me how to train it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was interesting was my manner of training it, the way I understood the information, the way I delivered the information, the stories I told made it seem like a very different experience. And for those who were struggling, since I had struggled, I could bring the, yeah. the all the stories around struggle and overcoming struggle to the table and make it a different experience. And so I think it's, that's what we're talking about is what is it that's unique about you that you bring? Yeah, absolutely. So you, go get, so if you're just joining us, um, we're gonna ask you to please let us know who you are where on the planet you're joining us from and what you do while you're living. Who are you called to serve? Who are those people that excite you and you want to touch and transform their lives? As you come on, also let us know in the comments section, what about this topic intrigued you? What do you want to know? What questions do you have? And comment, get in the conversation. If you happen to be listening to the replay, please hashtag replay, let us know. And do all the same things. Who are you? Where are you joining us from? What do you do for a living? Who do you serve? what brought you out and continue to comment. We will come back and look at the comments and respond to them 
get in the conversation, create that feedback loop and comment and talk to each other at the same time. Let's just have a great time. Oh, great, great, great. And then also take a minute to go ahead and share this with another super achiever. And so if you've watched this video and you find it very insightful, don't forget, you could always tag someone. You could always hit the share button below and just bless someone else with the conversation. And if you are new to us on YouTube, on our Influencers Journey channel, you just happen to stumble across this conversation and you're like, wow, this is amazing. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You want to subscribe because we are here every Thursday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you don't want to miss our conversation. So go ahead, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And then last but not at least we are once again in our promotional season of our Unleash the Power of Your Story. And so for all of our super achievers, we have a wonderful resource for you in the bottom description of the video, and it's the Freestyle Speaker Playbook. Now, this playbook is for any entrepreneur, coach, consultant, course creator, trainer, and you are looking to get more exposure for your business. Like Suzanne and I say, you are looking to get recognized, hired, and paid what you are worth. This playbook is for you. So make sure that you grab your copy below the video. All right. Well, we are going to get started. We're going to jump into this conversation. So if you are just joining us, welcome back to the Influencers Journey Show. My name is Suzanne Hart, and I'm here with social media strategist, Taria Hodge. Our topic today, get this, increase your bottom line, the competitive advantage of public speaking. I like that title. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> so where do we start? Um, I, I think we should kick it off in talking a little bit more about the impact of exposure and visibility on your business. And the, re the reason why I think it's great to start here is because there are a lot of people out there who, you know, are probably looking at their business and looking at their numbers and wondering, you know, how can I get my numbers to move and not just get my numbers to move, but get the numbers to move exponentially. OK, and one of the things that come to mind for me is that a lot of times we can stay in a one to one model and have conversations with people that we meet. And, and that works, too, on a one on one basis. But let's face it, it is a very slow journey. And so when I take a look at, you know, increasing your bottom line, what comes to me, one of the quickest way to do that is to gain more exposure for your, your business and create more visibility and then go from a one-to-one -one model in your business to a one-to-many model. And I think that that's the biggest thing that a lot of people kind of overlook, especially new coaches and new entrepreneurs out there. You want to go ahead and make that shift that you could go from, you know, sharing your services, your products, what you do, how you serve in one-on-one -on -one conversations to doing it on a one-to-many Absolutely. And and let's talk a little bit about, you know, what this means and what it looks like for one to many, because I know people are like, you know, when whenever we talk about public speaking, people are think often think big stages. And and yes, a big stage is awesome. And the beautiful thing about a big stage is when you speak and you're effective and you have um, information that you're going to provide. You let people see who you are. You become a little vulnerable. You take your audience on a journey. You are instantly going to be, you're going to build your credibility. However, you're getting exposure. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I think what's really neat about this is oftentimes we talk about paid speaking. We talk about unpaid speaking. I will say that when I started, I wasn't looking for paid speaking. Mm -hmm. um, no one knew me. I was like unpaid speaking. Here I come because my idea was exposure and visibility, mm -hmm. exposure and visibility. So anytime I was invited to speak, if it was my right target audience and at the beginning, even if it was an opportunity to practice, 
I would go out and speak and it was exposure and visibility. That was what I was looking for. And, and also feedback was my messaging mm -hmm. um, to people and giving, giving the right message. So that was the first thing. I think the second thing I really want to highlight for people is exposure and visibility come in many ways. So I, I was recently at an event got asked a question, and this has happened to me so many times, got asked a question, stood up, as they asked you to do in the event, you know, they tell you to stand and all that right. wonderful thing, say your name. And I did all that, say my name, where I was from, what I did, and I answered the question. Now, what was interesting was the manner in which I answered the question, because I do public speaking, um, caused engagement. And what occurred was people were coming up to me after the we broke for a break and going, I love the way you answered that question. What do you do? How did you get this perspective? It's exposure and visibility again. And I'll say to you, before I started public speaking, I would never do that. I was too afraid. I was too in my head. Right. I was too <laughs> uncomfortable. So I would sit in the back of the room with lots to say, but not willing to stand up and say it. Exposure and visibility is what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, I want to go back for a second because you said something that's so critical, I think, to this, <clears throat> this conversation. And one of the things that you talk about is, you, you know, speaking and how people, you know, especially, like I said, if you're new on the journey, how you regard speaking. And mm -hmm. so, yes, it's one of those things that I have too seen in my journey where people would have fees and we have colleagues, I have mentors that say, yes, every time I go and speak, my fee for speaking is $20,000. My fee for speaking is $10,000. And I, one of the things that I see a lot of is that I see a lot of new people positioning in the marketplace. And, and I'm making the distinction because it doesn't necessarily mean that you are new in your business, but it means that you're new to positioning in the marketplace and people really don't know who you are. And one of the things that they come and say, well, I want to only take paid speaking opportunities. And I watch them go on this cycle or go through you know, this thing where they're commanding a speaker fee and, you know, event hosts, other influencers are looking at them like, but I really don't know who you are. I'm not familiar with your body of work. And it goes back to what we're going to talk a little bit more about in our topic today, which is the credibility. And so people don't know. And so one of the things that I learned in the early part of this is that, yes, you take every opportunity that you can to show up and just show up. And you mentioned so many other things. It gives you a chance to get exposure to people that you may not have otherwise known, like people invite you onto their stage, onto their platforms, their webinar, whether it's social yeah. media, in person. So that's exposure for you. So what is that worth, you know, to you? So mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be willing to do that. And then once again, the second thing that you mentioned that was so, um, so crucial and critical to this is when you give yourself those opportunities at every moment to speak, you become more comfortable with Absolutely. your own stuff, okay? Yeah. So it's not scary or you're not in your head when someone calls on you to go ahead and have, have a conversation and share what it is that you do. A, a great example of this, Suzanne, is I see it all the time and, I, and I'm guilty of it too. I remember just being in panic when someone said, you have 30 seconds. <laughs> introduce yourself you to your business right <laughs> and, and you know you're at network like introduce yourself stand up three minutes 30 seconds whatever the time may be and share with us what it is that you do and I remember in in my beginning I was just like oh my god three minutes felt like three years like how long is this three minutes gonna take I'm low-key freaking out in my mind because I don't have the practice you know around it but the more you give yourself those opportunities those things come just like
like that. So you don't necessarily have to be an invited guest on somebody's stage. You could be in the audience and someone ask you a question. And because you are on top of your stuff like that, you know it back and front to and fro, you're familiar with it, then it allows you to show up as the expert. As Absolutely. You For sure. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, one of the things about free, free speaking, I went, I, I did, you know, free speaking and um, I took every opportunity. I will say to everyone listening, those opportunities eventually started making me in some cases more money than if I, I, I accepted what people were offering me. Mm -hmm. And so it, it it did so many things for me. It got me in front of um, people who had platforms that I didn't know were in the room, people who wanted to work with me, people who wanted, I mean, I've been offered host TV shows, all these things. Now they weren't, that the ideas weren't for me. However, the visibility and exposure was what made those things happen. So that, and, and that's the thing. And I will want to say that speaking is one of the, underrated marketing tools that we can use. So we're going to invite you to get out there and begin to use it. Um, I think the next thing I want to jump into is, you know, what being on, on stage and remember stage can be where you stand or stage can be a big platform does that nothing else I've no, that I know of can do. And, and, you know, we are so conditioned to send like resumes and bios and while they are great they don't give the one thing that i think is the decider in most interviews in most um hirings in most i want you on my stage it is the differentiator and it is your unique brilliance mm -hmm. and um and i think your unique brilliance shows through your personality, your conversations, your stories you tell. And there's there's something about your new unique brilliance that separates you from everyone else. So let me ask you, what is your unique brilliance? What do you think it is? So one of the things that I've come to learn that my unique brilliance is, is patience. Mm -hmm. and, and being having the ability to take the big things and really break them down. And so that's one of the things that I noticed when I stepped onto my journey. Technology is a scary thing for a lot of people. Social media is this place where a lot of people don't understand it. So they know that I should be positioning on social media, but how do I do it? Like, that's the question. How can I find the, the balance of showing up the right way without oversharing all of the personal details, not even to simple things of not getting on social media and getting caught up in the, the time consuming activities that really don't move your business forward. And so what I realized is that for, for me and the people that I work best with, you know, they have trepidations. They have a lot of questions and people have told me that their experience with others are around social media, didn't feel good because no one was really listening. No one really had patience for them to get it, you know? And so I have a curious mind and, and especially with technology because technology has been the thing that I was afraid of. And when I look back, I almost smile because I remember when I worked at my nine to five, I was actually told that, you know, you're really great on the phone. You have a, a great knowledge of the products and services, but um, sweetie, your computer skills suck. I don't think you're going to get this job. Yeah. <laughs> and so I look at that journey and I remember um, what it took for me to learn technology and I'm always grateful for all of the people who had patience. So there were people who had patience with me until I, you know, got certain things and I never that's forgot nice. that. And so that's what I bring to the table. So, you know, people that I work with, my clients, even you, you know, you have questions, even though sometimes the questions make me scratch my head. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Then I always have that natural curiosity to go figure it out, come back and break it down 
into a way that makes it digestible, you know, for the, for the other person. And then also make sure that you have the steps to do what you need to do. Otherwise to that, you're, you're just going to be stuck. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. And so what do you, what do you say is your unique brilliance? Uh, well, one of them that I have gotten over and over and over is I have a quiet strength. So I am the calm in the crazy. Mm. I, I have this ability to stay grounded, calm and centered in the middle of chaos. So I am the eye of the storm. <laughs> like and, and so that is one that has come from years of working in crisis and years of managing crisis teams. And you can't be in chaos yourself when everything around you is in chaos. So I've developed that uh, superpower, if you will. I think the other one is I have the natural gift because I can't say I've worked at this. I have this natural gift of being able to take very abstract, complex things mm -hmm. and make them very relatable. Mm -hmm. So I do mindset because mindset is kind of like airy fairy. I don't <laughs> know what it is. And I decided I was going to make it concrete and actionable for people. And so However, that's just the way my brain works. And anybody who works with me, as most people are talking, I'm writing programs yeah. because I can't help myself. And so people often come to me to help them break down and look at what they can't put language to. I'm stuck, but I just can't put the I word or do it <laughs> whether that be emotions whether that be how they're thinking whether that be that feeling that just can't go away whether it be that I have all the skills and I'm moving forward and I know I have the experience but I'm stuck mm -hmm. um, I'm that person that can hear what's not being said that can see see often what others don't see and 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 move yeah. And so um, I'm blessed that I get to build a business around that, but those are my superpowers. Yeah, and so I think the key thing is when you engage people in conversations from the stage one-on-one -on -one and you, and you become visible to them mm -hmm. and I'm talking visible in body language, visible in eye contact, visible in your energy, all those things are those differentiators that they pick up that subtle thing about you that they that has them say, okay, that's my person. Um, again, at an event, I looked at someone and she said, you looked at me and you saw me. Ooh. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm just being Suzanne. Mm -hmm. And and however, that is one of my traits. I, I look and I listen. I listen to hear and understand. And so in her experience of me, which could not happen if I wasn't visible to her and in presence, and we're in a room and I looked at her across the room and I, she wouldn't be in conversation with me asking me about more. Yeah. I want to know more about you. Those are the things we're talking about. Those unique brilliances, those differences that that set you apart, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and and that's really it. And so, if once again, if you're one of our super achievers out there, and you are listening, and you are struggling, you know, to answer that question for yourself, spend some time, you know, to understand it because it's that thing like you call it your superpower I say our it factor is that thing that we bring you know with us all the time that has no other choice but to shine that attracts our people to us and I will say that so, so get out pen and paper so you know what you remember what I said someone put it in the chat um <laughs> it's the thing you take for granted often mm -hmm. because yep. it is so easy for you it comes so natural for you, or it's the thing that was born of your struggle that you now naturally do because it's a coping mechanism, but you dismiss it. Yeah. And, and everybody else is like, wow, such and such is really good at this. Or it's the thing that people come to you for. for the and you're just thinking, you're just thinking, oh, <laughs> everybody comes to me for that. It's, eh. that's probably your superpower that you want to be paying attention to because it is going to be a gifting that will highlight your unique brilliance. 
Absolutely. All right. And so we're, we're going to, you know, continue in the conversation because I, I love what you touched on before is how does all of this, you know, help you build your credibility and build your brand authority. And the, the, the thing that stands out, stands out for me is being the best kept secret like out there. And so it's one of those things that uh, even on my journey, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of brilliant entrepreneurs who are just absolutely great at what they do, but they are still hiding out. They are still hiding um, and they, they really don't get a chance like you say, to showcase your brilliance. So that's one thing is to understand what your unique brilliant it, brilliance is. And the next thing is how do you really turn that on for your business and showcase it? And, and you know, I th when you talk about hiding out, I think one of the things that's really interesting, particularly in this time, is a lot. I think a lot of people don't know they're hiding out. Mm. And, and so we are in a time where lots of people have the opportunity to work from home. I've worked from home for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it is easy, particularly post-COVID, to stay cocooned in the comfort of your environment, particularly now that we that everybody's very comfortable engaging mm -hmm. people through Zoom through um you know, all the different platforms that are out there. However, I know for myself, one of the commitments I make to myself is, is during each quarter, I've got to attend at a number of public events where mm -hmm. I get to get face to face, energy to energy, touch to touch, can shake, hug people so they can see and experience Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Because it is still different to be on a platform than to meet in person, break bread, have conversations, you know, have a coffee, all those different things. And, and, you know, we're talking public speaking. However, every time we open a, our mouth as, as professionals, as entrepreneurs, we are doing a form of public speaking. That's over a coffee. That's over dinner. That's standing up in a room and answering a question. And so I think what, what, what begins to happen is that as we go out into the world and the more we go out into the world and the more we represent our brand, the more credibility we have. That being said, I'm going to let you jump in and I'm going to come back because I want to talk about credibility a little bit more. However, I want to hear what you got to say on this. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's very interesting because you you are absolutely correct. Nothing trumps being able to be in, in actually close proximity in person. Like you said, you could touch, feel, shake the hand, give hugs. I love hugs and all of that stuff. And people have the ability to experience your essence in presence, but in, in, in their presence. But one of the things being in this space of, you know, social media and online, and I too have been in the online work from home space long before COVID. So actually COVID was just like, oh, that's easy peasy. While everyone was freaking out, I've been doing this, you know, for so long. But it's that thing, nothing really changes. The question becomes is how do we do that in an online format? Okay. And so a lot of times, and we're talking about being visible exposure is how are you showing up online? And a lot of times people think social media is this place where um, I'm just going to go ahead. And because the gurus say I have to post on Facebook three to five times a day, that's what I'm going to do. I used to do that. I have to post on Instagram five to seven times a day, and I'm going to get the pretty curated pictures and stuff other people's quotes and all of that stuff. And I, and I am, I am going to do that and so forth. And what I've come to learn is that being online provides its own unique opportunities for mm -hmm. us if we are strategic about it. And so I know for myself, 
one of the biggest things that allowed me to build credibility and increase my brand authority was hosting my own platform. Yeah. Yep. And I hosted my own platform for many years, still do have the opportunity to host this platform, the Influencers Journey Show with you as well. This is a form of building your credibility. And so even though you might not be in the same space with people, people show up, they ask questions. So how well can you take that initial step of building relatedness with your audience? I too have been a part of communities where people gather networking opportunities. And I know people say a lot of stuff like, oh, is it worth my time to get on here for an hour and network? And I'm going to say absolutely, yes, it is. If you are looking for exposure, you're looking for visibility, you want to increase your influence in the marketplace, choose an, an online networking opportunity that you could participate in, whether it's once a month, whether it's once a week, and make that a staple you know, in your business. And give yourself that opportunity, you know, to connect, give that, give yourself that opportunity to share your expertise, build your credibility, share your story and your messaging out there in the marketplace. And then what you'll see is that in the moments when you have the opportunity to show up in person, you can, and then you won't be like, two sides of the coin, you know, or laying heavy on two sides of the coin, you could have a good mixture of both in-person opportunities and then online opportunities as well. Absolutely. You know, I want to touch on credibility for a moment because um, when we talk about visibility and we talk about exposure, I will say to everyone listening, visibility and exposure could either build your credibility or it can just detract and destroy it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's truth. Like that is absolute truth. And so one of the reasons I think what we do in this program, when we talk about unleash the power of your story, uh, storytelling, public speaking, all those things, is that we prepare you for exposure. Because how many of you have met someone and they have stood up and their answer is full of ums, ah, uh, hmm, pauses, and they're, and how they're putting their content together or their answers together, you're like, ah, oh, they're not prepared. Um, I don't have confidence in how they're delivering. And although they're getting exposure and visibility, it is not doing anything for them. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you have people provide information and they're bombarding you with content and they've put you in so much overwhelm that you may leave thinking they're brilliant, but they can't teach me. Mm -hmm. So we have all these really key things that when we're talking about exposure and visibility, that must be taken into account. How gracious are you to the host? How engaging are you when you're with someone? How much time do you spend listening to others versus doing all the talking? How, how intently do you listen? Or are you running ahead and thinking about what you're going to say next rather than being present? I, I, you know, I remember when I taught sales, and then and yeah, I did, I did teach sales, so I had a sales team. Um, and and I we would do these role plays. And in the middle of the role play, I'd all, I'd ask the person, so what did the person just say? I'd ask the salesperson who was in the room, what did the client just say? The prospect just say? And they'd be, they'd look at me blank. <laughs> and I'd go, so where were you when they were talking to you? And they would get present to, I was thinking of what I was going to say. And I go, so you weren't listening. And so there's all these pieces and to, and to be a great trainer and presenter, you've got to be listening and responding. Why am I saying all this? Because oftentimes, and I know I say it, just because you feel comfortable in front of a room and you're talking does not necessarily make you a speaker and someone who's speaking in the best interest of your brand we have got to cultivate conversations that represent us in the best light. And trust me, much money invested over here for that 
end and still working at it. It is a constant because for every level I get to, Tria, I got to grow. I got to expand. I got to build my comfort. Mm -hmm. I've got to expand my ability to present. It's a constant. Yeah, uh, of course. You know, and I think that that's for everyone. So that's the question, you know, that's on the table. So how well? you know, are you seizing the opportunities? And so as you were speaking, one of the things that I, I, we just came from doing our series of videos online. And one of the things that you just mentioned was not because you like to talk, not because you are comfortable on stage means that you are a speaker. And so when I listen and I hear hear you speak, one of the things that's coming back to me is that you have to give yourself like every opportunity, you know, to get great. So how well are you seeking out those opportunities or how well are you creating those opportunities for yourself? And so I would be remiss as a social media strategist if I didn't tell people like, this is your opportunity to grow into your speaking. And so if you are looking for more exposure, more visibility, or you're even practicing to get better to command larger stages, you want to take advantage of the opportunity that social media offers with offers to you to be able to get your practice in and do it. Don't wait until you get the big opportunity to try to figure out, oh, how am I going to show up in the best light? What's my conversation going to sound like? Practice doing it because I see it all the time, Suzanne, in the space, people would say, why am I doing um why am I doing this video? I did the video, I got 10 views on the video, and then they will get so disappointed in the video. And then when we go back and we look at the video and we give feedback on the video, my response oftentimes is, wow, thank goodness it was only 10 people. Can you imagine if it was 10,000 people? Mm. opportunities that would have been missed, right? So always give yourself the opportunity to work on your craft, get better at building your credibility, hone in on your message, all of that stuff, and take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you. Very good. It's, it's so, so true. So question, mm -hmm. can, can posting and dropping videos on social media truly give you a competitive advantage? Because I know- mm -hmm. uh, a conversation often is, um, you know, it does social media work. Mm -hmm. I have so many um, colleagues and peers who are like, oh, you know, I'm just done with social media. Um, I don't see any return on it. Does it really work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, my answer to the question is a resounding yes, that it really works. Okay. And the, the first thing I think we covered the one of the first things in answering that question to the top of the show is, you know, people hiding out. And when they take a look at the opportunities to show up, especially on social media, they're not really commanding or taking advantage of those opportunities because it might be where they really don't truly fully understand um, what what social media can do for them as far as exposure and visibility and increasing the bottom line. Some people just probably feel a lot uncomfortable because it's an open space. So they feel a whole lot vulnerable. But here's the second thing. When we talk about being able to, once again, look at increasing your bottom line and your exposure in social media, one of the things that stands out for me, Suzanne, is that we always have to remember people are out there looking for their people. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the first thing. People are out there looking for their people. So just as much as we are the coaches, we're the business owners, the entrepreneurs, and we're out there positioning to find our people, our people are out there looking for us. And we will miss the opportunity for people to find us if we stay silent and we stay quiet. Mm. And I'm um, thinking of a particular influencer when I say people are looking for their people. One of the people that absolutely stands out for me is Gary V. And what I love about Gary V is that he is this in your face, 
no. no cut cards type person. Like you have to have intestinal fortitude to sit down and have a conversation with Gary V because he is going to be straight up in your face, give it to you raw, straight up, no chaser. That's Gary V. Now I'm going to tell you as I look at him, is he the only person that deals in content marketing and no. helping entrepreneurs grow their business? And what he's really good at is showing people like, how do you do, how do you make social media work for you? He's not the only person that does that, but he shows up in his unique style, his unique brilliance that he is able to attract and draw his people, those people who appreciate that type of conversation, that type of manner and style, he attracts those people, you know, to them. The, the second thing I want to go back when you ask the question, well, the third thing, actually, when you ask the question if social media really works, here's the thing that I always come back to. So what are you looking for or what do you consider your return on investment when it comes to social media? So one of the big things is people go into social media and they say, well, I spend a lot of time on social media. I'm doing all of the things on social media and I'm not getting the monetary, the monetary return. And I'm not here to say that money is not important None of that. You will never hear me say that. Okay. So yes, you should be taking a look at your mon your monetary gains. But one of the things that I think that people overlook on social media is the return on relationships. And so oftentimes we go into social media looking at it like, oh, I'm going to get clients because that's what everybody says. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my clients. I have my programs and I have this that I'm offering and I want people to buy. Yes, we want that. But also, how well are we able to nurture the relationships? And so are we actively looking for people that we could collaborate with that would help us ex expand our messaging on social media? So I know we have a consciousness around that when we do it in person, but do we have that same consciousness around it on social media and how to leverage the platform? Also, just like any relationship, cultivate. And so sometimes people take a look at, you know, um, things and I'm just going to use videos and I'm going to share my strategy. People take a look at doing videos. Okay, Taria, I'm going to do videos on social media. And they're so in their mind about the actual activity of the video. And what's running them is I can't wait until I turn my camera on. I don't know how long this 30 minutes is going to take for me to do this video. And by the time they're finished with their live video, their recording, whatever, in their mind, they're shut down. They're done. But really and truly, if you were at an event, would you treat an in-person event the same way? So would you get off the stage, walk through the door, and go home? And the chances are, no, you would not. You would spend time in the room. You would network, you would meet people, you would get to know people, you would offer next steps. Social media is no different. And so we do have the opportunity to cultivate those relationships. It's just in a different format and maybe a little different of a process. So one of the things that I tell people, and I too remind myself, because I'm not going to sit here and tell everyone that I don't have my frustrating moments on social media. I absolutely do, you know, but it's always, it's a long game. It's a long game. And so once you understand just like relationships is a long game and then you're willing, you know, to play the long game, then you come out on the right side. So I hope that that answers your question. It, it, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now I have a question for you. And my question is, why is gaining a competitive advantage so important to us as influencers? I, I think that influence is competitive advantage. Mm. And, and so, it, you know, 
competitive advantage, when I gain competitive advantage, it is gained by my ability to influence a group of people, mm -hmm. one person at a time. So as influencers, it's not just showing up and, and talking and, and thinking I am doing well. Mm -hmm. my, the, the piece is I show up, I deliver a message and the real test of that message is what was my ability to inspire, enroll and influence the next action of that person. And so when I'm able to do that, I'm becoming an influencer. If I'm just talking and I feel really good about what I said and I'm all caught up in what I said, however, it didn't land for someone and it didn't create any kind of action, Am I truly influencing, mm -hmm. right? You know, leadership is defined as my ability to inspire people to take action because they choose to, not because they have to, but because they're inspired to act and move and model what I possibly might be doing, what I've shown them. That's influence. So when I get into a room and I'm having conversations, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many, it is my ability to inspire action that we're really talking about. And that's the correlation. You can't have, you know, credibility and the competitive advantage without having influence. They're one and the same. The yeah. question is, how are you doing it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. All right. <laughs> okay. So Tria, what is our quote of the week? Oh, I think, Suzanne, we are going to leave our super achievers with a quote by Chris Anderson today. And I absolutely love this. And he says, your number one task as a speaker is to transform, is to transfer into your listener's mind the extraordinary gift, a strange and beautiful object that we call an idea. Now, what I absolutely love about this, it takes me back to the thing that you always say is when we have the opportunity to command the stage and we have the opportunity to speak, we have the wonderful chance to create enrollment. And so as you speak, how well are you enrolling your audience into your vision, into your idea, into your products and services, or like I say, how you can serve them? Well said, well said. And it's such, it's such a great quote. So we are at the top of the hour. You have been listening to the Influencers Journey Show. My name is Suzanne. I'm sitting down with Tria Hodge. We will be back here next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until we meet, please know you are brilliant. Know you are oh so very special. And we do this work because the world is waiting. Blessings and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.